delighted as Mayor of the City and County to be here to officially launch your book. Um, fantastic achievement and may it be uh, the second of many, many more. Thank you very much. The pleasure and the honour of getting to know Karen Power from WRFM just about a year ago, in fact, when Butterfly Barn was launched, we had her on the show and something about her really connected me to her and she really inspired me as well. And I'm sitting here imagining if that didn't say power and maybe it said Tompkins on the end of a book, what an inspiration to be launching your second book within one year here in Waterford City. What an amazing woman she is. And Karen, you really are a testament to the fact that if you have a talent, you have to pursue it, you have to use it. But something she does as well is she doesn't forget about friends and family, because I know there's so many of you here this evening, and you don't forget about where you come from. And there's always a smile on your face and a chat for everybody in the room. So I think that's, uh, that's certainly the key to your success, Karen. Did you... Did you think this time last year when this purple book, Butterfly Barn, was being launched, you'd be back here only 12 months later? No. <laughs> That's the short answer. No. Um, I have to say, I, I couldn't do any of this without my family and my husband, Michael, and uh, my kids, Owen and Ashling, because their support is so huge in, in my life and it's, it, it's everything to me, to be honest. So they, thanks lads, <laughs> for your patience. Now 2015 has been a really, really busy year for you and I think Whirlwind would be an understatement, Karen. Tell us some of the highlights that you've had over the last year. Oh, I'm, I've drawn a blank. I'm like, it's, it's been, you know they say a roller coaster? I think the roller coaster forgot to go down again. It just sort of stayed really high and, and uh, I just feel really blessed. I think the most important thing for me was that when I wrote Butterfly Barn, I wrote about a very personal time in my life and um, where we lost our, our twin baby boys. And I think that it really meant everything for me to put a voice on that loss and, and uh, how that felt, but to have people to read it and understand that you need friends and you need family to get through that kind of a loss. And uh, I wanted to leave the book with hope. And I think that's why Felicon and, the, and uh, the, Pre the Miscarriage Association of Ireland and all the charities backed it because they kind of felt, well, this person is writing about something that's really hard, but full of hope. And that's what I wanted to do. And strangely enough, Karen, um, when I was trying to figure out what kind of a cover I wanted for the next book, um, I came up with the yellow. and. Uh, I went, I was over with my mother-in-law's, uh, Siobhan, she's here, and uh, I said, what do you think of this? And I showed the picture on the phone, you know, and she said, oh, yellow, the colour of hope. And I just thought, if I, you know, I didn't even know that, and that was, that was the, here was this picture, this cover and everything. And so I, I feel blessed and I feel honoured, and I, I couldn't be here without everybody's support and everybody coming along. So thank you all so very much for making this possible for me. Really appreciate it. Now, when we were waiting for tonight's event to start, two people said to me separately, I can't even arrange to meet her for a cup of coffee for five minutes because it'll take two hours because half the town is talking to her. Someone else won't go through Dungarvan Shopping Centre because they won't make it out alive on the other side. I was buying shoes in a shop in Waterford City today, got talking to the girl behind the counter, and I said, oh, I'm going to the book launch tonight. And she said, what book? I said, Butterfly Wing. She said, oh, the, the Butterfly Barn Woman, is it? You have really, really connected with so many many people. It's the butterfly book, the butterfly woman. But do you, did you find the reaction from people surprising in the beginning? Yes. Um, one time in Dungarvan, uh, Claire and I, Claire did the window. I have to all tell you about Claire Spencer Bowman is here and she did the window last year and again this year. And we were in Neeson's anyway in Dungarvan and, and Claire was setting up everything and this woman came in and she said, you had me up all night, she said. And I said, Sorry, no, you know. And she said, my sister told me to read that book you wrote. It's always that, that book, you know. And I said, uh, oh, yeah. And she said, and you had me up all night. And she said, uh, we were laughing because she didn't buy it, right? <laughs> she got a loan of it, like loads of other people. <laughs> so, and Claire said, 
you know, I wish to God they'd buy it. <laughs> so what I found is that people are telling other people about it. And I think that's brilliant. They're saying, you know, oh, Nora got the book and she gave it to Nelly and Susie read it and the next one read it. And I just felt, well, look, you know what? That was, that is what I want. I want people to read the book, pass it on, tell their friends about it. And oh, hopefully maybe a few buy it or whatever, but look. <laughs> It will be good, you know, but I, I, I'm really grateful for that because I think word of mouth is the most important thing, you know, and, and I think that's, that's the thing, isn't it? I've been lucky enough to read on Butterfly Wings a few months back. Karen contacted me and she said, would you mind reading it? Would you read what was near the final draft at that stage? Now, she didn't give me a book. She gave me an old PDF in an email, I might add. She didn't print it off for me. And... Uh, I, I just was delighted to do it and for a whole week neglected my husband, my housework, whatever it was. And again, it just engages. If you enjoyed and read the first book, you're back in straight away. The old characters that we know return and you just have this lovely ability to bring us back into Bayrush. Tell us a little bit, without giving too much away, because we would like people to buy the book, a little bit about where we're going with Butterfly Wings this time. Okay, well what happened was, because most of you would know that I dream that a place called Butterfly Barn will actually exist sometime and it will be in Waterford. And uh, so now in On Butterfly Wings, Butterfly Barn is created. And so we have Grace and Jessie and Sophia again, um, because many people want to know what's going to happen next for them. But there is the little French girl, Monique in uh, Butterfly Barn, I bring her on as the lead character and it's, uh, the story goes with Monique, its relationships and her loves and her life and the whole lot and uh, Butterfly, Barn, Butterfly Barn has taken Butterfly Wings I suppose is the way but it's a fresh story um, but with all the old characters still so that's kind of and I hope to stay right and hopefully <laughs> Now there was obviously the in uh, Butterfly Barn you know there was a very personal theme running through the book as well. With this one there's quite a serious theme as well and it's literacy this time which is kind of interesting for people who won't have read the book yet. Um, absolutely. I work for uh, Waterford Wexford ETB and uh, I deliver communications and I also work for the literacy service and um, I, I suppose because when I write I want to write about real things and things that affect people's lives and uh, literacy. I mean one in six people in this country have a problem with reading, which is a really, really high um, statistic. And I just wanted to throw light on that and, and to show as well that it's, it's not something that happens to you know, lower income people, it's, it's a thing that happens to many people um, in their lives, from middle class, upper class, you know, wherever. Um, and I, so of course, one of the weekends in Butterfly Barn is a literacy weekend. And the great all fun happens at that and uh, lots of things, yeah bit of fun and romance as well in, in at that. So that's kind of where I went with that. And the interesting thing is that you were asked to speak. Um, isn't that right? With the Literacy Association, they didn't know anything about the connection with the book at the time. No, it was uh, during the summer, I got a phone call from Emma and she said, uh, Karen, she said, the Literacy Service would like you to um, be involved in Literacy Week on the 21st of September and would you come and, and speak at it? And uh, I said, oh, I'd be delighted to, you know. And I said, you're not going to believe this. And she said, what? I said, I wrote about literacy in this book. And she said, oh, she didn't know that I had done that, you know. And I just thought that was, that's my little baby's up there guiding this whole thing because I, I think that's a lot of it, Karen. It's, this thing has, it's nothing to do with me. It's to do with a lot of other stuff. I know that's a bit out there for a lot of people. So look, anyway, I'll, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> And this book, we said, you know, Butterfly Barn, a lot of men were reading it and really enjoying it. Again, I think they really enjoy this one. There's so much in it. There's a lot of humour. A um, bit racy once or twice, I'll just warn you in advance. Uh, she, she's pushing the boundaries. But again, the humour is there. Uh, the, you know, there's the, the lovely theme, friendship. So it's kind of, again, it's for everyone, this one. Yeah, I'd like to think it's for everyone. And I did smile when um, I, I, I go to writers' um, talks, you know, and there's usually mostly men. There's an odd few women. It's, it seems to be a, a very popular writing is popular with men. But they'd say to me, uh, I read that book, and I'd say, like, the purple book, you know, can you imagine him sitting down reading the purple book? And they say, on the Kindle. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 
So uh, I am delighted that, that both men and women are reading it. And they did t tell me as well that I should be saying it's a, a contemporary fiction book and I should drop the women. <laughs> so uh, look, you know what, it's, it's just, it's been fabulous. And, you know, thank you for, for everything. I know you wanted to mention as well, when you're not traveling the world, when you're not mucking out on the farm, when you're not a mammy or writing books, you've also written a fabulous song that connected you and your dad, Paddy, who's here tonight as well, who's our man on sound somewhere in the building. And uh, I had the, the pleasure of having uh, you and Paddy in studio talking to us in WRFM, and we played the song sung by Tara Heffernan. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, what happened was uh, with the song, it was originally a poem and uh, I found it in a journal about oh, 10 years ago now and um, it was really sad, it was really dark and uh, I kind of had just left it and it didn't have any hope in it and uh, so I looked at it again and, and I put hope into it and then I came to Dad and I said, Dad, have this poem, I said, I wonder would you turn it into a song? Ah, he said, that's too sad. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, oh no, yeah, no, I see where you're going with it. It's got hope, it's got hope. And um, so anyway, uh, we worked together with it and he said, um, you, you have to put a melody to that. And I said, Dad, I can't sing. And I mean, anybody who knows me knows I can't sing. Just think I can sing with a few drinks, but I can't sing. But anyway, um, I went, worked with this and the melody going along in my head and I came back to him and he said, yeah, yeah, we have something there. We'll keep working on it. So. Uh, we worked together and we tweaked it and uh, the whole lot and um, my dad sang it then at a charity event and uh, David Hayes, who, you, uh, who many of you would know, he's a fantastic musician, heard it and uh, David said he'd love to work with it and dad jokingly said to David, she wants Barbara Streisand to sing this song. <laughs> And, uh, da and uh, Dad said, well, uh, at least David said, we don't have Barbara, but we do have a lovely girl called Tara Heffernan, and uh, I'm sure she'll, she'll consider singing it. So she did, and it's, it's just beautiful. And um, the first time, I, I cried for about three weeks, to be honest with you, when I heard it. And uh, it's up on YouTube now. It's, it's available for anybody to listen to and to pass on to their friends. It's just one of those songs that fills people, I hope, with, with hope. So... It really is lovely. Check it out. Now, there's a very important man to my right, but he'd probably kill me if I speak to him, and that's your husband, Michael. Uh, I'd like to ask him, but I better ask you, describe to us what life is like as an author. Uh, she's got her editor at the other end of the phone. She's a, an established author now. What's it like on a day-to-day -day basis? A lot of people are inspired to write books, but is it difficult, the actual mechanics of sitting down and doing this? Um... I suppose for me it's 12 years of this and uh, I, I wrote the first book and the second book and the third book kind of in the dead of the night and uh, um, it was, and then I put them all away and uh, went on with my normal life or whatever and then I eventually found the courage to do something about it so it has been nuts to be honest for the last year. <laughs> It's a very um, definite nod. Yeah, that's a definite nod. But uh, in, a, in a crazy nice nuts kind of a way. He's nodding in, in agreement again. <laughs> but um, no, I couldn't, as I say, it just couldn't be done without full support. And same with my parents and my, my parents-in-law and my sister-in-law, Isabel. She's, she's a gift from God. Look at her up there. <laughs> and without um, all the help that I got from the ETB, um, the Start Your Own Business program that I did, uh, with Frank McQuillan, to Trish, she's out there, there she is, uh, she's a great mentor and a great support to me and like this is I suppose for me not just about writing books but it's about people reading your books and, and, uh, and, and putting it out there and it's, it's sometimes really difficult to do this and people say to me, ah oh, you're a dab hand and I say, oh god I wish I was, but you just, I really believe I suppose and my passion and my full belief is that someday a place called Butterfly Barn will exist and it will be here. And so with all your help, thank you. And all those photographs that people sent from all over the world, if, if any of you are on Facebook, uh, um, you would have seen like that these photographs come in of the cover of the book in the most beautiful places. And I'm really thrilled and honored by that. And it would be wonderful if people kept doing that um, because it's spreading the word and it's getting it out there. To Paul Dower over there from Waterford in your pocket, that man does fantastic things for this county of ours. And uh, 
he, I think he's, he deserves a round of applause because he does it from a heart now. Um, and I think, I think that's the important thing. I think Waterford people are fantastic. They pull together and uh, I think we show that all the time. And, and uh, thank you. Um, thank you to everybody. So. And I know, of course, you were mentioning the huge support, Karen, with the arts here in Waterford as well. And it's wonderful to have the mayor of our city here tonight. It really is. You must feel very special. Oh, my God. I was so thrilled because um, I, I couldn't believe this. The, the arts office have uh, purchased 65 copies of On Butterfly Wings for visiting dignitaries coming to the city. So I just, like, that is such, such an honour. It's such a... Um, Thank you very, very much. I would just like to make a small presentation on behalf of me and indeed on behalf of all of you. Uh, Karen just spoke there about the um, amount of photographs that were sent in from all around the world, from Bally Gunner to Bratislava, from Anstown to Arizona, I mean from all over the world. So what I did was I put a small collage together of a butterfly with some of the photographs from all around the world that were sent in. So, there you go Karen.